going right to it. I click live, so we're already we're already rocking and rolling, my friend. Good. Oh, it's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you too. I miss your face. I miss your face. Well, I'm excited to chat with you today. I think we're going to have a few people that we know that are maybe going to jump on. Usually, Miss Amy. Wait, yes, so I'm we'll waiting. See. I'm waiting for Amy to come on. That would be awesome. <laughs> You're so big. You're so big. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited to chat with you, Miss Erin. And, and you know what? I, I think all this time I've been thinking that your name is different. Your surname is, how do you pronounce your surname? Uh, Parados. Parados. I always thought it was yes. Parados, but it's Parados. No, a lot of people get it wrong. They say Parados, like, you know, like when I was younger, my I got teased and it was potatoes. Oh, geez. that's that's how people remembered me. So I, you know what? I love potatoes. I will, uh, I'll I'll take it. So you know, hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, I get. Um, believe it. It's funny how uh, there's uh, you know people will tease about whatever, and uh, I've had hug has huges huggies. Yeah, I the Hughes is a very common surname, and yet people still get it wrong. Yeah. Okay. Why and why do people feel like they need to like make fun of people's last names? Like it's so ridiculous. But anyways, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> so we do have someone to join us. Uh, so okay, so I'm going to just introduce you, my love, because I know you wear many hats, and and one of the hats <sighs> that you wear is uh, being a self-love and, dis and divorce recovery coach, which is so cool. And so we are going to talk, there's Amy. Hey, Amy! <laughs> so, um, so it, well, just as a little bit of a side note, I just want to tell people how we met and was through Miss Amy at her conferences, because you were being a big wig at her conferences. <laughs> I've messed conference. up Amy's last name a lot on stage too, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, it's, and and I, I, Amy already knows this, but I have a cousin who is the same last name, but he pronounces it Ruddle. So it's interesting how the name, you're, like someone's name could be mispronounced differently depending on who it is. So, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, so you and I met when you were a conference director, and I remember back then you had talked about starting your own uh, your own biz, and now that's what you're doing. And so you're helping people ditch their shame, get rid of old scripts and self-limiting beliefs so they can rediscover themselves, discover fierce self-love, and gain the courage to live their life without fear, which is so cool. I love it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then and I, you know, most of us, if not all of us, have been through heartache in one shape form, regardless whether it's divorce or breakups or even in the business world. I, I'm just finding that there's a lot of similarities uh, in the business world when it comes to being rejected. So um, yeah, it all, it all matters. I mean, being rejected is like one of those things that it really teaches you a lot about yourself, especially going through something like divorce where you have this idea of who you are mm -hmm. and then um having that idea rejected and then it's like okay so where am i supposed to what am i supposed to do now who am i now and i know that um throughout my entire life i kind of lived in this very self-conscious uh you know people pleasing um lifestyle that you know even after my divorce i i was like who the hell am i but then realizing oh god like who the hell have i been mm. because i was trying to be everything to everyone else and you know i think working in the conference industry and i've obviously had a pleasure working with you and and obviously amy i you know have had such an experience being able to um, help people. And I mean, there's a lot of different ways to help people, but I knew after going in through like doing events and being on stage and seeing the, even the transformation over a couple days in terms of how people shift their thinking about themselves. And it just kind of opened me up to this whole other world that I actually had no idea about. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was quite amazing. So I, because I actually, you know, was going through my divorce 
during the time that I was working as a conference director. And it was really the thing that actually, I think helped, helped me re recover because I was, you know, I was obviously traveling, but I'm, I was obviously um, helping people and, and helping people learn and trying to, you know, inspire with, with what I was doing. And um, yeah, so it, it kind of just all, snowballed from there and I think from a very young age I always knew I wanted to do something more um but I never thought I would be sitting here talking to you saying oh yeah I'm a self-love and divorce recovery coach like I would never if you would have told me like three years ago even I would have been like you're crazy so um yeah like I feel very privileged to be doing what I'm doing and and I feel just I just want to help people yeah and I think, and I think that that self love is, as you know, is just with. It, it, I, you probably see it a lot with speakers too, because yeah. you, you've been able to see behind the scenes that almost yes. all of us have got this like imposter syndrome of like, oh that sucked. Like almost every one of us after we get off stage, that sucked. I was horrible. And and, just and you see the feed like you don't you kind of get feedback and you're just like ah like. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and focusing on the negative feedback. So I know we really do. I mean, almost every one of us does want to receive feedback. We want to, we want to better ourselves. We want to do things different. We want to improve. But yet most of us have a tendency of focusing on that one person who didn't like us, right? So I think yeah. there's, a lot, there's a lot to it from both a professional and a, and a personal standpoint. So so that's how you basically started the Joy Tribe, right? Like that's how you started in, and chose this career? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely started with doing, you know, the conference directing and working with Amy and all of the amazing speakers. I learned so much from you guys. Um, and just, you know, going through the divorce process myself. Mm -hmm. And it, to be quite honest, I it was really difficult. And there was one night that I woke up in the middle, I think it was, well, it was 3 a.m. And I had this idea, this, the joy of the, it literally just came out of nowhere. And it was like, you need to start the Joy Tribe Co. And so it actually started um, as mental health events. So where I was bringing people together to talk about their mental health struggles. And it was literally just, you know, people who just wanted to speak. It wasn't necessarily, you know, speakers, but it was just, you know, not to say ordinary, but like normal people coming together, talking about things. And um, through that, uh, I was really able, like I felt super inspired. And then the pandemic hit and obviously, you know, stuff happens so i'm like you know what how else can i use my strengths how else can i use um you know what i'm doing in another way and just i was called to do to become a coach and i was called to do you know d the divorce recovery and i i don't know if pe if people are following me i am very inspired by tomb raider and just this whole idea of becoming like the heroine in your life because i was literally the damsel in distress for most of it. And I was just tired of living someone else's story. And I wanted to be able to help women find that heroine and find who they are and find and start loving themselves again. Because a lot of us just go through life and just like, you know, go through the motions like, I will go to work, I will do this. And it's just, you know, there's, it's like once you go over that edge of like, there's so much more to life than that, it's like incredible. And that's what I want to like share with the world. So as much woo as that sounds woo woo, but it, it's true. I don't think it is woo woo. I think it is. And, and the pandemic, I think probably has certainly become a focal point for a lot of us as well, because when, whenever we go through some kind of adversity, whether it's going through a divorce or, or job loss or a death, in the because they're all deaths, quite frankly. Yeah. That yes. For Ross, you know, the five states is we're all sort of looking at like, is this what life has to offer? Is this the yes. best that life is ever going to get? And you know, and it and it's hard. It's hard to go through that loss. It's definitely it's crushing, regardless of whether you, you someone else has made the decision or you've made the decision yourself. Yes. Going through that loss is so hard. But to your point, that Tomb Raider fierce heroine, you know, like the power pose kind of thing is it, I just find so many people do find that resilience. They do find that when they've been through adversity, that they come out on the other side so much stronger for it. But when you're in it, 
you don't feel like you're ever going to get out of it. Yeah. And I mean, and I think that's the thing where I was really struggling and I obviously didn't have anyone to help kind of like in my friend group or my, in my family, like no one was going through divorce, Mm -hmm. like no one could help me. And I was like, uh, okay, like, I don't know how to deal with all this, like, first of all, rejection. And then, okay, well, what does that mean for me? Like that the, you know, I identify now as like this, this idea of failure, because Mm -hmm. let's, let's face it, my parents have been together forever. And like, my sister is happily married and like, like, and I guess there was like a, a couple of people in my family who have gone through that, but it was just no one I could really you know, connect to my specific story. And um, yeah, like it was just having, not having someone there to guide me um, through that, I think it would have just made the process, first of all, a whole whole bunch quicker. Yeah. And, you know, to be able to teach me more about like unlocking my strengths and unlocking my potential and, you know, being able to see the positive out of, you know, that devastating divorce. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's the one thing when I went through my divorce was my mom, uh, my mom's like the best sort of reframer. She, she's so funny because she'll like, she'll go, okay, you have a certain amount of time that you get to grieve. And then she would, and then with mine was, okay, listen, your life could be a whole lot worse. And then it's yep. sort of like, and then you start to go to, and then I went to anyways, a place of gratitude of realizing the benefit. Like, what, the, what are the things that I have in my life to be grateful for as opposed to focusing on the negative? So that certainly helped me. And of course, as you know me, Erin, I talked to everybody. So like anybody that would even like look my way, I just was like, listen, let me tell you about my story. Yeah. And I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. But a lot of people are not. And a lot of people internalize their emotion. Right. And that is, you know, that digs deep and it really gets not only embedded in your mindset, but it's embedded in your body and you begin to not like take care of yourself and you get this negative garbage that you put into your head into your body. And it's just some, it's, it's hard to get out of that sometimes. So I think what maybe is it what you do sort of hold, you hold people sort of accountable to, to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's basically, you know, you can, you can go obviously go through divorce, but there's a lot of time, even with just regular habits and like being able to, you know, start going to the gym again, or, you know, wanting to go back to school, like all of these things are, are habits that you need to start doing. And it takes about, I think, 21 days for a a habit to, you know, process and get into your system. And I mean, that's almost a month. Yeah. So a lot of people with the busy lives and like going through the motions will just be like, oh, well, that didn't work after like five days. Like I'm done with it. And people who are going through heartache, they're like, I just need to cope. I need, you know, food. I need alcohol. I need, you know, I want to sit in my sorrow forever. And I like, I'm never going to get better. And like the negative cycle happens. So it's harder to get out of that. Mm-hmm and you know get new habits when you don't have anyone there because if you're especially going through a pandemic and i mean yeah we're you know getting out of it but you know going back out into the world like you need to gain those those healthy habits and start you know socializing again and you know being able to feel confident in yourself so I, I truly believe that having someone there to guide you, and I call this the inner adventure because you literally are going inside in an adventure through your emotions, through your life, through your trauma, and you're having to combat it, and you're having to fight those demons, and you're having to fight those like fire-breathing dragons. And you know, it's to get to the other side that's the hardest, and that's that's where I come in is that I'm the one with the the map and, you know, helping you get there. Yeah. Um, actually, I did have a question from a friend and I forgot to send this to you ahead of time, but yep. and hopefully you can answer this, uh, which is how many, uh, like, have you, have you dealt with a lot of people? Like, does this a lot of, does a lot of this negative self-talk come from childhood? Like, is it that, that those traumas from childhood and so forth that are just sort of resurfacing? 
again? I would say majority is from trauma from childhood. And here's the thing is that trauma, like, and I don't want to negate any like horrific trauma, but literally everyone deals with trauma. Literally when you are born, it is a trauma to the body. And whether it's like a small thing that happens and um, <laughs> I love you, Amy, <laughs> whether it's a small thing that happens to you or it's like a major event, you're still going to be traumatized. Like, let's go, let's go back to my story. So I didn't necessarily like have a super traumatic event that happened to me, but you know, when I was younger, I didn't feel like I was enough. And there was a, you know, my, my, my dad was going to all my sister's baseball games and I was the art kid. So I'm like, well, what are you like? I don't have any art shows for you to go to. Like, what are you going to like come see? So I internalized that and thought that I wasn't good enough. And there was one moment that I particularly remember that because I was, I, I was, and still kind of terrible at math. Um, even Amy, well, I will, you know, going through the budgets, I like freaked myself out like every second anyways um but there was a moment when i was younger with my dad and he had come home you you know after work and he was like tired it was a stressful week for him and the last thing that you want to do is like help your child with a freaking long dis like division question that they have to do so when he was working with me if he was like short tempered and like just didn't want to like he was trying really hard, but he just like wasn't in it. And at the time, looking back, like see, being in that moment, it's like, okay, well, I must be real stupid because I'm not getting this. And he, like, I was not, like the information was just not going. And so looking back and, you know, working, you know, I will say I'm working with a therapist, you know, going back and, and looking at that situation and saying, okay, well, what actually was happening in, in that moment? He was stressed out. He was busy. He worked a long day. Like he's coming home and like working on a, like math problems, which is like the last thing you want to do. So being able to step in the other person's shoes, but also learning. And again, this is maybe, you know, growing up and, and learning life, but like parents are just trying to do the best that they can do with what they have. And it's not always going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect, actually. It's, you know, and that's the thing is that we, we can't, and it's hard to learn this as a young child, but like we can't necessarily blame our parents. Obviously, there are situations, yes, you can blame them, but they are just, you know, they're just trying to do what they can do with what they have. And I think learning that and being able to, you know, unpack that for myself really helped into, you know, understanding my own trauma and why I think the, the thought the way that I thought. So that was a long whole circle of life no, there, but. It totally makes sense. And I, you know, one of the questions, one of the things that my mom and I will say sometimes is like, my mom will say, I never woke up any day and said, I can't wait to screw up my kid's life today. Like no, no parent ever. No <laughs> one says that. that. Things like, oh, great. Today is the day that I'm really going to devastate them. Um, because, you know, everyone, you're right. Everyone is doing the best that they can with the tools that they've got. And, and sometimes it is important to get on the other side of the table of like, what were my parents going through at that particular time? And, and instead of taking, I mean, I've just done up with myself is knowing that I can't, like, I have to take ownership of, at some point you got to take ownership of your life and stop yes. other people for what's happened. Right. Because the more you can take ownership back, even though like it's, it's more powerful that way. You are. Yeah. 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 And, th and that's kind of where I sat after my divorce is like, okay, well, clearly going through life, you know, listening to what society thinks is correct, listening to, you know, how you see your parents and how you see everyone else's life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having a partner that's like a cookie, cookie cutter, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed to have. I'm so, like, you know, this is supposed to happen in relationships. And it's just like having such a skewed view of like, or, or very boxed view of what life should be like. 
And, you know, looking back on it, it's like, okay, like, how did that work out for me? You know, how, like, and it's almost like, and I'm sure you can attest to this as well, but looking back, you're like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, yeah. But I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty. But there is where the action needs to happen. Is like, okay, well, now you're looking back, and you, you you assess what's happening, and you assess what happened in your relationship, and like, you know, like you said, like, what ownership can I take on this? Mm-hmm. Because it, I mean, again, this is not you know set in stone things because every relationship is different. Yes, there are some terrible relationships, but. There are some things that are red flags or things that you what might have overlooked that you weren't listening to yourself, that you let slide. So therefore, you got into this mess altogether. And I mean, you know, on my wedding day, I had, you know, severe anxiety walking down the aisle. And I was looking for garbage pails to puke in and places to run. And I was like, I'm just nervous. <laughs> Like it should not have been like that. And I think that we need to like normalize being talking about these feelings and like whether or not you are like walking down the aisle, you can still say no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I get that though. Cause I know that that feeling is like, well, I've made this commitment. I've, you know, whether yeah. you're in that, now, whether you, whether you're engaged or you're married and but I, that was the thing I kept saying over and over again, I've made this commitment. Yes. You know, and it's not, it's never going to be a Disney and then they lived happily ever after. Like marriage is hard. It's, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, yes. And you throw kids into the mix and, and so on and so forth. And it gets even more complicated. And yeah. Yeah. And the grass sometimes seems greener. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So it's, it seems like, oh, if I, if I only, and, and this happened to me actually was I was watching, like I was watching the people in my network, same thing like you, where I was like, Oh, like, look at these people. They had these fairy tale lives. And then someone reached out to me and said, Oh, you know, behind the scenes, my life isn't what you think it is either. And I, and I was like, Oh gosh. Yeah. Here I was sort of, um, envying other people's lives to think how amazing if I'd only gone in that direction, how great, how much better my life would have been when really the the facade of what goes on in social media isn't isn't the truth. Not yeah, people put out what they want to put out too. So yeah, yeah, and so I think you know, I one of the things that I've learned too is to run your own race. You can't compare your own life to someone else's life, too. I mean, I think, it, yeah, I yeah. think that's very important to say. Like even like within your like LinkedIn and branding and all of that, and and looking mm-hmm. at other people's companies, like what does that do for us? Right. If we are all like we all have something unique. We all have something unique to provide the world. So comparing yourself to others. And I mean, I do this as well. I'm the real person, but like trying to compare yourself to someone else's journey is like oranges to yeah. mushrooms. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just <laughs> what, like everyone is different yeah. and everyone has a different journey. And that's what makes life exciting that's like because we're all different because we all have a different walk of life that's mm-hmm. what makes it makes it exciting and 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 crazy that we live on this earth so yeah yeah so what are some of the misconceptions that people have with what you do and how you help them what do you think that people is do you think there's misconceptions um yeah like i think there's a lot of people that think that coaches are just like woo woo like oh yeah like there's the universe is like spreading all this joy and like there's no work and like they don't really help you and the, uh, like really the misconception conception is that is that everyone thinks that coaches are like airy fairy and there's a lot of coaches that are out there that you know don't necessarily know what they're doing and like that because it's under the the coach there's no real like overarching um organization but getting a certified coach whether that's a certified life coach and health coach which i am both um it's it's better to work with someone like that but i mean really for me 
like coaches are there to support you and coach you because sometimes you just can't do it alone. And I have clients that, you know, I, my first client, she started out, she was going through depression and she, um, you know, had lost her horse farm and she was in a really bad place. And so working through her with the program with her and going through everything. And really the biggest portion of my program is getting through the mindset. The mi Your mindset controls everything. Your mind is what controls the body. It controls your emotions. Like it's an incredible, like I could talk all day about this, but I, I don't know how much long longer we have. But anyways, side note, um, but just being able to change the way you think about certain things and being able to, um, you know, change just even the smallest things in your life and then having them have big impacts is incredible. So now going through the program, she is now becoming a, you know, a speaker in business and she is starting her own company and like doing all the things, which she had it all on her own, but sometimes you just need someone else to help you get that out of you because you know that you, let's face it, there's a lot of th things that we know we're supposed to do and we don't do them because we're too busy. We got something else going on in our life. We're scared. We have fear around what's gonna you know, happen, what's gonna be exposed of like, you know, things about us and all of this but really a coach is there to help you like expose that stuff and get that shit out of the way and get into new stuff where it's like your new life and you're you have this positivity and i mean yeah nothing is ever sunshine and roses but like there is a chance to have a new opportunity a new life if if you want to change that's the big thing. If you don't, if you don't want to change, don't get a coach. It's not going to work. No, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Cause fear does hold us back so much. There's so much about fear. Um, and, and I, I think we all still face it, even though we know better, we don't necessarily do better when it comes yeah. to fear. And I just, I just know that I have to be in one of those moods where I feel like, I feel like, I mean, Mine might be Wonder Woman, right? Because that was my thing growing up as a kid in the seventies. Yeah, he's a powerful, yeah. you know, kick-ass. <laughs> Good, yeah. You know, with those cups that she had, and I have to be in one of those those moods where I'm like, ah, it's okay. If people say no today, but there's other days when I'm like, I just can't take it today. I just can't take another no today. I just couldn't. I couldn't put myself out there. Yeah. But, but knowing that it's it, it's incremental. That success doesn't happen overnight. That. You know, nobody wakes up one day and goes, okay, now I'm going to do a keynote. Uh, that doesn't happen, right? It's yep. like the very first time I was speaking on a, like, not a state, the first time I had to speak in front of 10 people, I was like, like the first time I was so nervous. And and now it's it's easier. I still have the fears, but I know that it's not as bad. Like the fears that I have going into it isn't, isn't as bad as when I do it. And then afterwards, I'm like, I'm so glad I did that. And it's sometimes yes. the little steps. It's the little changes that we make that can turn out to be long changes and like bigger changes in the end. Yeah, like I can remember get on, getting on stage uh, during like one of the first events that I went to with Amy and I was like sweating all over. I was like, I was like, I'm in a puke. Like, what, what am I going to do? And it was like, I got through it. Yeah. It wasn't the best, but I got through it, but I took the step and then I kept on doing it and I kept on doing it. And then I was like, okay, I actually love this. Like I actually love interacting with people and, and, you know, being on stage and making people laugh. And like, it's, it's great. Like, again, like little steps help you get to the bigger picture, get to, to the, like the bigger adventure part of it. Because I think in all some cases, yeah, like in some cases, though, taking those little steps were um, like the, 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 that once you achieve one of those little minor goals, um, it does it like they when you look back on it, you go, well, if I can do this for me, I there's a lot of changes I had after I did skydiving. Because skydiving oh, was wow. the big thing. I wanted to do that so badly. And then after I jumped out of a plane, I'm like, well, what else can I, you know, like I could take on the world now. So what what am I so afraid of if I can jump out of a plane or or whatever it is yeah. that is your, is your thing? 
Um, and then the same thing happens. We almost all universally say this at funerals, right? It's like, I'm going to like uh, we shouldn't wait until now until we reconnect with each other again. We always say those things and that life sort of gets in the way sometimes. So yes. it's sometimes getting out of those, those ways of feeling like, oh, I can't do this because for the fear of what someone else is going to say, in fact, the people who love you are always going to have your back. I mean, you know, yeah. that's. Thank God for Amy, because I mean, she's always making us, I know we're fangirling about Amy, right? But um, you know, like anybody can fall on their face and Amy's gonna be like, oh, you're fine. You, you know, you're fine. You're, you're great. <laughs> so, um, I should but yeah, like, it's, yeah, so it's, it is, and it's just doing it. And then realizing afterwards, like the, 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 the negative self-talk we have is far worse than anything anybody else could say. Yes, Right. yes. 100% and yeah. like, like we are our own worst critic. And I know that's like such a cliche thing to say, but it is true. Uh -huh. But all of these things, like this whole idea of the Tomb Raider, because I, you know, love video games, but like this idea that, you know, you go through life, like going through, you know, get levels where you're like, getting all these trinkets and strengths and you're learning all these different things mm -hmm. so that you can get to the next level so that you can get through the things and this goes for the really shit things that happen to you like divorce or a really bad breakup or you know you lose someone close to you or um all of this you know allows you to learn something new about yourself and so I, too, I find this too and i might i might have said this in some of the other chats that i've had is the couple times that I have done something that has been um, pretty dramatic and so far as going on national television or whatever, I realized afterwards, I don't look as nervous as I'm feeling inside. I mean, when I was on the social, it was an out of body experience. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> so oh my hard. God, yeah. I would be fangirling all of it. But, but, it, but, but afterwards I was like, oh, I can see I'm nervous, but more like other people can't necessarily tell. Yes. Something. But that gave me the confidence to be able to do other things as well yeah. because i realize you know the way that people perceive me is not the way that i'm perceiving myself at the time those heart palpitations the feeling like i'm just like oh my god i'm gonna die right now um, yeah but yet nobody really saw that because it was like the where's that metaphor with the duck with the feet paddling <laughs> underneath, the, yes. underneath the water right so that's kind of the way i sort of felt but it's not the way that other people had perceived it so once I I have taken some of those like small like once I've set goals or, or done something and then I look back and go well if I can do that what else can I do and I think that that for yeah. me that, that's helpful for me I want to ask you too Erin so one of the things I noticed too and I was actually having this conversation with a girlfriend this morning um, about ghosting so I don't know how many, <laughs> I don't you want to talk about ghosting but it happens professionally it happens personally. Um, I, I just find, uh, you know, with the dating apps and things like that, do you find that people have just become disposable? Like, is that is that something else that's sort of like it's dating and, and, and all that kind of stuff in the digital age is, is a little different. And it's are people having to go through those those motions, too? Yeah, like the online dating world is crazy. And I know when I was working with Amy, I was on those dating apps and just ghosting is one of those things that people take personally and i remember and you know you, you just take you take it personally because you're like oh my god what did i say what did i do but you really don't know and again like it's just stepping into the other person's shoes thing where it's like you really don't know what that person's going through like maybe they maybe they just decided you know what this isn't for me or, you know, has something going on or like went on a trip or obviously people, you know, should have the decency to say, you know, Hey, this isn't working out for me. Um, I, I hope you find what you're looking for. But for the most part, people are cowards mm -hmm. and they don't want to say how they feel because they don't want to hurt the other person. So they, they would rather, you know, let that person sit on red rather than actually saying something. Mm -hmm. So if you come into that situation, it's just a matter of, okay, this has nothing to, nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with the other person. And quite fr frankly, 
you did me a favor. The universe was doing me a favor. Get out of the way so I can, like, I can find someone else. So if you just start, really for dating for me is like being able to look at it like an interview process. And like you're literally interviewing for t to start as a friend. So, you know, going into it, you know, having this idea, I'm excited to meet someone new. I'm excited to not look, and I used to be like this, but like after the first date, you like imagine all this time, like the years ahead. Okay, there's my three babies, there's my wedding, you know, all of this stuff. But you just kind of like forget all about that because mm -hmm. when you, when that stuff gets in the way, it actually, you know, changes the dynamic of the relationship and it puts pressure on the relationship. But if you go into it where you don't put pressure on yourself, you want to have a good time and you see what happens, mm -hmm. is that's more of the way to go. Is like having a more like laid back, you know, if I find someone, great. If I don't, that's okay. Right. Because being single is okay because let's be serious when you get into a relationship you're gonna have to do a whole bunch of things that you don't want to do anyway so enjoy the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. and um I, I was gonna go someplace with that the ghosting thing but yeah when like i mean the what maya angelou when people tell you who they are believe them and, and yes as i said like i i've experienced this in in professionally too with you know people have asked for quotes and I'll go back to them and follow up and follow up a few times. And then finally, you know, you just finally kind of give up, but you're right. It has everything to do with them. Oh, this is where I was going to go was the question. And I think that place of vulnerability of putting yourself out there. And that's the, it's interesting because the same thing goes for job prospecting. I like yes. job prospecting to dating all the time because, um, you know, even though you're going through that interview phase, it is a vulnerable place. Yes. And, um, thank God for our friend Hans Ekman who has helped to reframe and say things to me like, you know, stop thinking of yourself as the contestant and realize you're the grand prize, which yes. was, for me was like, mic drop. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yes. It's an amazing yes. thing to look at it, right? Of, instead of being the one that's in the more vulnerable place. Yes, it's vulnerable to put yourself out there, but, but realize that, you know, that that is not, uh, it's it's okay. It's like it's okay to realize that you you're bringing value in your interviewing. This the person. It's not just about the power control of they have all the power and you're the submissive one, but you have the choice as well. So, like you're interviewing for your heart. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Like that. For your heart. That is really oh, what you're I doing. Love it. I love it. And you're interviewing the the in the interview. You hope is for someone that's gonna like stick around for a decent amount of time. So being able to choose wisely is essential. And you can do that by figuring out what you want before you get into that date. Because once you know what you want and the type of person you want, it's going to be a lot easier because you're going to be like, okay. And I mean, I'm not saying like have a complete checklist of like his eyes need to be blue and his hair needs to be dark and like he needs to be fit. And like, but really just in that for me, you know, obviously looks and like sexual attraction is high on that list but do they have the same values do they you know have the same outlook on life because if you don't have the same outlook on life and the same um you know vision stuff yeah for sure yeah there's no point in you know getting together because you guys are going to veer off at some point so yeah. And just being able to laugh together, you know, being able to feel, I think that the feeling that I look for is like a feeling of safety. Mm. And, you know, that's something that I didn't have in other relationships mm -hmm. because it was just like this feeling of calm and this feeling is of calm. People like think about, Oh, this, this relationship is boring or like, why don't I have anxiety about all the things that are you know going wrong or like, you know, why do I feel like crap like 80% of the time? Mm. And it, yeah, I think it's just this, all relationships, like you said, you, marriage, all of it, it's difficult, yes. But if you have the right partner that you're able to communicate, you know, issues, like that wants to talk about stuff, that you're, you know, feel comfortable doing that, you have fun together, you, you know, all of the things, 
it is just knowing what you want instead of going in and, you know, and being in, and staying strong to that. Because I know when you get into dating, you kind of like let your guard down. And you're like, oh, that'll go away in a bit. And then you go on and you go on. And I'm like, okay, it's not going away. But as, as bad as it sounds, but like, don't settle. Right. Don't settle. Yeah. <laughs> But I think, and I think sometimes you're right. I think we do sort of question things. I mean, especially the longer, the longer we live, the more you know, yeah. we have our heart broken. The more like we're a little bit more accepted. Like I'm not perfect. There, you know, I can accept this. Blah blah. blah. But you kind of have to also be, um, you know, I think recognizing some of the red flags as well. And then, you know, and where are the where do the boundaries lie? And that's, I think yeah. that's tough for a lot of people. For me, I know that yes. this is still a big struggle for me. And so far as like, I don't realize someone has crossed a boundary until I've, it's already happened. And then I go, well, how did I get here? Um, how did I let this happen? And then I realize, oh wait, I let, I let it happen because I didn't set the boundaries ahead of time, but I don't even know how to set those boundaries and because I don't know what they happened until they've been crossed, if that makes sense. So there, there's a, there's a, that's why you need to like figure out what you want in the first place. Cause one of those things is boundaries is like, what are the boundaries that I have in a relationship when you know what you want and don't want, and you're able to like staying strong in that. If you put up a boundary and that person is like, you know what, F this girl, like this is, this is terrible. Like, and, and like fights it. Right. It's probably not the person for you, but someone who listens to your boundary and goes, oh yeah, you said that you didn't like this, or you said that you wanted to have like space after you come home from work and stays and, ex and respects that boundary, then I would say that's a good good person to consider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough, because as I said, sometimes you don't know when, until you're in it and then it's trying to, big, and trying to navigate around that, which is not finite, like there's, <clears throat> you know, everybody's boundaries are going to be different. Yeah. And, and it's acceptable. And then it's sort of like, okay, can I, like, I always used to say before my divorce, I was like, I'll pick my battles. I'll pick my battles. Yeah. Um, you know, because there's a lot that I was like, I'm not happy with this, but whatever. I'm not happy with it. Because you don't want to lose them. Um, it was sort of, it wasn't about losing them so much as it was like, I, I don't, I don't have the strength to fight on this particular topic. Mm. But when it came to like, when the hammer came down, then it was just like, I mean, once I said, I said to my ex-husband, I didn't think I was going to go here with him, but I said to my ex-husband, I only have to say I'm leaving once. And that's all it was, was like, you know, there was a lot of threats on his end of like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, I'm only going to say it once. And that's what happened. I was like, okay, I'm done. And it's not as easy as that, obviously, but but that's what yeah. happened was, just enough buttons were pushed. But, you know, I was like, okay, and I'm out. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But that, that and it's hard. Me. It is. Yeah, it's hard to say no. It's hard to stand up for yourself in those situations because you don't know how the other person's going to react, and like you don't have the strength to like really fight on this. And you, in the end, you want your relationship to work, sure, because obviously that is ideal. But I mean, just be—I think just being no, like knowing yourself and having this intuition about what you want and who you are and like what goes against your boundaries or your values is important because then as much as like you can you know have an idea of this and like read all the books like you need to know inside and like your body tells you yeah your body usually is the one saying oh okay this is a little bit you know too much or like okay, I'm feeling this, like, I feel comfortable. Like, you'll start to begin to um, recognize signs and you can do that by, you know, I know meditation is very, I still struggle with it, but just even just like taking a couple of moments after a date and like being with yourself, get off of social media, nothing else distracting you. And just, even if you wanna turn on some meditation music, but just sit with yourself. How did I feel during this really during this date? You know, do I want to go on another date with this person? Mm -hmm. And just starting to sit back and like be quiet with yourself, even in other situations with like business, it's like, okay, how do how did I feel about that meeting? What is what do I want my next step to be? Mm -hmm. And just see how your body feels. Yeah, because your intuition tells you so much. And there's a oh. really cool book. I don't know if you've read it called The Gift of Fear. With, by I Gatsby. haven't. 
Oh my, my gosh. gosh, it's a game changer. I saw I saw Gavin DeBecker, D E B E K E R, I think it is. Um, and his and basically the whole book, The Gift of Fear, the fear that we feel in us. And it was really um, he's a, he's a bodyguard to celebrities and things like that. And so it's, it it doesn't necessarily have to do with relationships, but more so of, of women when we put ourselves into these situations and we second guess uh, putting ourselves into situations because our gut tells us maybe I shouldn't be. This doesn't feel right. And in hindsight, we look back and we go, this is, I knew it. Yeah. I knew it, but I talked myself out of it. And and so, and the same thing goes for the gift of fear uh, with, with children. There's a book that he wrote about the gift of fear with kids. And it's the same thing. I've, I've done my best to raise my kid to be like, go with your gut instinct. If someone doesn't feel right to you, that's okay. Like if something just doesn't feel right, acknowledge it. And yeah. honor it, right. Because we do talk ourselves out of a lot. Based on, I want to be the nice person. I want to people please. I want to all that kind of stuff. So, hundred percent. Yeah, and our intuition. Yeah. Um, crap! I just forgot what I was going to oh, say. Okay. <laughs> no, and I think actually going back to it because one of the things that I really struggled with uh, is anxiety, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I suffer from anxiety. I suffer from OCD, and one of the things that I constantly was. Well, I was questioning my relationship during the eight years that we were together. Year five probably should have ended it. Mm -hmm. And I kept going through it and getting all these bodily signals, thinking it was anxiety and like making myself sick, be like basically living a, a life outside of my body and getting to the point, obviously where we get to divorce, but it's like, if I would have just listened to my body this things would have been different, but that's where I'm saying is like, take time to get to know yourself and get to know your body and how things feel and like, believe your body. Because the difference between if you, for me, between anxiety and your inner body knowing is that when you are silent with yourself, what are those thoughts coming through that you are, com you can completely not non, -ju non judgmental to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's the truth yeah 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 i mean here's another question and, and i don't know if you can answer this aaron but um i have a friend that's sort of going through some issues right now insofar as thinking about whether or not to divorce like they're sort of in a mm -hmm. crossroads of and i and we've been there you were there i was there like like and i i don't know if you have any answers for you know do you stick it out do you decide to move on like what are some of the things that people can so to ask themselves, perhaps, um, yeah, the questions that they that, like my friend can maybe sort of do a gut check on themselves as to whether it, you know, do I stick with the marriage and the kids, or do I, or do I move on? And do you have any insights, or is it? Just yeah. yeah, I think in terms of you know, again, I am not directing anyone to get divorced at all. I, this is not a definitive answer, but. I think you can ask yourself, have I done everything to try and save this? You know, have I had tried to have conversations with my partner, like full on not judgmental, open conversations about where we're both at, mm -hmm. um, you know, and really questioning. And, and maybe that's, you know, getting a journal and literally writing down everything and how you're feeling and really doing a gut check there is like, okay, is, is this really what I want to be feeling like? And, you know, is this how I want it to go on in the future? And if this is, if you feel, and again, like if you feel in your gut, this is something that you want to stick with and it's worth going forward with, and you've done everything that you can do to make it work. And again, checking in with yourself. Like, are they going against your boundaries? Are they treating you with respect? Are they, you know, are you just not vibing? Like, are you, you know, have you lost yourselves in this relationship? Can you rekindle that back? You know, creating, um, you know, a day where you have a date, either that's a communication date or it's a legit date where you go out on a date and you start dating each other again. But if you have exhausted all of the things and you know within your heart of hearts that you you need to move on, I know that it's going to be very hard and you know the process is is difficult, but 
in the end, you are going to be so much happier and your partner is going to be happier and your kids are going to be happier when you're happier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause I think it's a, I think it's a moment of, you know, they say this on the airplane, but you put your like oxygen mask on first before anyone else is, because if you're not happy, like, your kids are not going to be happy you know life is you're just good you're going to be living half a life and why would you want to do that if you feel like you're doing that then i think that you know you shouldn't settle in your marriage or relationship because being happy and you know finding the things that you do find joy in that can happen outside of that and you can still have a wonderful relationship with your partner if mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. um but sometimes like we have to like normalize that sometimes relation all relationships just don't last sometimes like they were for a reason a season and a time and you know you you came to learn something and then you move on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i have seen some marriages that circle back like after they go through like this period where i think and mostly it's the women that i know that like they'll they'll do something they'll go back to school or they do something to empower themselves and and then maybe after they've gone through that process they realize actually i kind of like this person like, but the like to you know the, the thing that comes in my head which kind of sounds stupid is the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know i think that they sort of almost re acclimatize and maybe um, as i'm saying this out loud too Aaron, is maybe when they found themselves through education, through empowering themselves, they realize that actually the problem wasn't necessarily with the relationship. It was me not feeling powerful in my own life. I don't know. I don't know if that's the answer. That is 100% it. I think that really relationships come down to you. Mm -hmm. So who you're being in that relationship, how you're being in that relationship, you know, making sure that you are staying true to yourself but also contributing to the relationship. Because again, like if you're not, you know, taking care of yourself, doing self care, you know, doing things that keep up your love for yourself and your authenticity, um, you know, it, it adds to the relationship. And that again, like you come into the question of like, where are you both going? Like if you're both not on the same path, then what's the point? So, you know, being able to, and because there, there is this whole idea of that you need to get married, you need to have two kids, you need to do all of these things, that you lose, you lose sight of who you are, because this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So I think that it, yeah, it, it makes sense that women are going, or whoever is going back out into the world, trying to find themselves, and then come back and be like, oh yeah, you know, that was actually really great. Or, you know, I, I needed to go f find myself and rediscover who that is to come back and actually love stronger and love bigger, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not that relationship works out, but there's no bad thing in learning more about yourself because really it's just going to allow you to have a better life and to, you, you only have one. Yeah. You only have one life. Yeah. And I've read a lot from, do you, have you read Esther Perel stuff? I, I have, I have uh, heard a couple of her podcasts. Obviously she is, I, I haven't heard a lot. I know I should probably. No, no, but it, but. <laughs> I, I love her because what she, one of the things that she said, there's a whole bunch of different things and we can go down this and we're kind of have to wrap up because there's like so many things that we can say with this is that our often our relationships go through different, um, even if you're married to the same person for your entire life, you go through different variations yeah. of that marriage. And so you, you, you like, she, I think what she say something like, um, used to be monogamy was having, like being with the same person for your entire life. And now it's monogamy is one person at a time, but you can have that person for like, and have different iterations of your marriage. The, the pre kids, the, during the kids, the empty nesters are all different marriages all into themselves as well. And so there's different ways to find yourself within each, yeah. And I think that's the beauty of it is that, you know, yes, you can have all these values and like going in the same direction, but no one stays the same. Yeah. Everyone, like every minute you're different. So being able to be with someone who's open to um, growing and exploring life with you and, you know, being able to support you when you're feeling down and you're going through a tough spot and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And just having the knowing that your partner is not going to be the same from the day you meet. 
Mm -hmm. Because you're going to, that's where marriage takes work. Yeah. Because you're, you know, constantly having to wake up to choose this person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to, you know, share this life with this person. But again, like, it's really about, you know, two individuals coming together that are constantly evolving and changing. And if they're willing to, you know, put in the effort to continue to explore each other and the world, who knows where that will take them. Yeah. The most successful relationship I've ever seen is when, and, and I don't, I haven't seen it very often, but the most successful relationship I've ever seen is when they really like each other. Like they genuinely, yeah. I, have a, I have a couple of cousins and they genuinely really like each other. They've gone through the same, you know, obstacles that everybody else has gone through in marriages and things like that. But whenever I see them, they just sort of like they pick each other out of the, it's so cute because they pick each other out of the crowd and they somehow make them make them their way back to each other. And they really, even after been married for 20 years, really genuinely, I can see it in their faces. They really enjoy each other's company. So I think yeah, that, that would be the magic. If it, <laughs> if yeah. And like you, like you said, like you're, you're, con you're continually finding your way back to each other. I think that's beautiful. Like yeah, it's just, it's for, yeah. Yeah, you know, you're going and having your, you know, individual individuality, not necessarily like going to be single and going crazy to Las Vegas, but allowing yourself to have that other part of you that can go with your friends and go on adventures by yourself, but yet, and changing and evolving and yet coming back to the relationship and be like, hey, babe, this amazing thing happened. Like, listen to listen to this and like, you know, or, you know, I had this big change. I need your support through this or whatever it is. But yeah, coming back to you, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's a good metaphor. So speaking of metaphors and like that kind of stuff, do you have a, like a mantra, a belief, a motivational phrase? I usually like to ask people that. Is, was there anything that... Um, I, I'd say that it's your inner adventure awaits. And that was kind of the tagline that I started with when I first started this, uh, this inner adventure myself. Um, and just, you know, you are the heroine or hero of your own life, no matter, you know, what you're going through or where you're at in life, you can always start anew. You can always find happiness. You can always find joy. Cause I think that's one of the biggest things that people, you know, when my clients come to me is that they've lost themselves and they've lost joy. So you can always have, you just have to be willing to change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think gratitude too, yeah, for sure. helps a lot. Finding yes, joy every yes. day, finding a little There's bit. There's always something. Yeah. There's always something, whether you you wake up and you're like, I'm breathing today. Yeah. <laughs> I day. woke up, I got out of bed. Cool. Made some yeah. coffee. <laughs> sometimes you know? there's little things that we're grateful for because it really does make the mind shift. It's your point. Like sometimes people can spiral up and sometimes people can spiral down. So find different ways to get, get yourself to spiral up and find the spiral up. Yeah. Hashtag spiral up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Miss Erin, so uh, how can people reach you if they want to reach out to you to find out more about how they can get, you know, coaching and um, all that other fun stuff with you. Yeah, so you can reach me at uh, info at the uh, website is uh, www.thejoytribeco.ca. And uh, you can find me on Facebook or Insta. And I post a lot of tips and inspirational stuff. Um, I also, uh, sorry, that's at, at the Joy Tribe Co. And then um, when you get onto my website, you can join my mailing list where I write a blog or do a video every week. So lots of good stuff. I also have a YouTube channel, lots of things going on, but there's always a way to find me. Yay. And Amy mentioned and surrounding yourself with awesome friends. Yes, Thank yes, yes. Thank God for my friend Amy this year. She's helped me like this COVID stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm just so grateful for our little her little campers like she, <laughs> she doesn't she call them campers for all her speakers and things like that so definitely we're, we're like we're part of the we're part of the amy amy tribe amy amy fan club amy, amy fan club <laughs> for sure thank so you fun. amy thank you amy for posting that <laughs> Yeah. Oh, gosh. The next time we should have a three, like the, go have a three-way chat. The, oh my god, I would love it. That'd be so much fun. We so. could do it with red wine. 
I think that would be fantastic. Like an after nine yes, like it event. Be, it could be day drinking. Could be the day Or it could be, it could be, it could be true. <laughs> Yay! I'm so, oh, and Steve Jones is on here too. Friends and Games helps for sure. Those guys have just kept my sanity because they keep me laughing. So definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Miss Erin. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. And um, if oh my gosh, join and and you know share their key insights with us. There's a lot of different ways. From this is on YouTube and LinkedIn, and I share this also on my blog as well. So please let Erin and myself know. Uh, any key takeaways, uh, any of the best parts that you liked about this, please do let us know. So thanks again. Yeah, Eric. thank you. Thank you so much, Leslie. This was amazing. Yeah, it's so much fun. So insightful. This I could I could talk about this stuff all day. I no love, kidding. I, love <laughs> I, love I have. I talk about anything all day, but I do love yeah. talking about this stuff. So your insights have been really helpful. I'm sure a lot of people really uh, have found it valuable to, to get to, to get your, your perspective on all this. So. Yeah. Well, Maybe. thank you for yeah, well, allowing me to grace your stage. <laughs> awesome. All right, sweetie. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.